Hello and welcome to Sauron South's video on how to install a chain conversion kit on your Sauron Light B. The primary drive on the Light B is a belt from the motor to a large pulley wheel. We are going to replace this with a chain and two sprockets. To start with, we will need to remove the main chain. Begin by loosening the rear axle using a 6mm hex drive on the brake disc side and a 17mm socket on the other. We are using a gun here, but you can use a ratchet. We now need to loosen the chain before removing. Use a 10mm spanner to undo the locking nut and then undo the bolt to loosen the chain. Use a pair of pliers and a pick tool to remove the chain clip and disconnect the chain. If your chain has o-rings, make sure not to lose these. Put the chain connector back together and store in a safe place while we do the rest of the work. Pull the chain through to remove it from the bike. Next, we need to remove the rear brake caliper. Undo the two caliper bolts using a 5mm hex driver. Lift the caliper to the side and store the bolts in a safe place. Undo the bolt that holds the brake pipe and wiring to the frame. Now we need to access the belt and pulleys. Remove the two bolts holding the motor cover in place using a 4mm hex drive. Using a 6mm hex drive, loosen off the motor retention bolts. This needs to be done on both sides of the bike. Remove the nut from the motor pulley. Remove the concave washer, taking note of which way it is facing as we will be putting it back on later the same way. Now we need to disconnect the rear swing arm from the rear suspension pivot arm. Using a 6mm hex drive and a 13mm socket, remove the middle bolt from the pivot arm. Remove the bolt and store the bolt and nut in a safe place. To remove the rear swing arm, we need to use a special castle nut tool, which you can purchase from our website. Undo the nut and use a pick tool to remove the washer. Set these aside. Use a punch tool to push the bolt through. We have set our bike jack so that there is no tension on the swing arm, which means it's easy to pull the bolt out. We now need to loosen the drive belt. Push down the motor tension arm and then use a pry bar to gently lift the motor slightly. Use a flywheel puller to remove the motor pulley. On our bike here, it was really easy as the bike was new. Yours may be more difficult. Ease the belt off the motor and through the hole. Then use a screwdriver or pry bar to ease the wood rough key off the motor spindle. Grip the rear swing arm and pull back from the bike to remove. Be careful not to drop the intermediate shaft, it may come with the arm or stay in the bike. Now we need to remove the rear pulley from the intermediate shaft. The bolts holding this on can be very tight and have thread lock on them, so we will use a vise to hold the shaft. Use a 5mm hex drive or allen key to remove these. We use a soft cloth to prevent the shaft from getting scratched. Make sure to seat your Allen key squarely as these bolts can round easily. Clean the shaft and then fit the new sprocket with the numbers facing up and the raised central section facing down. Apply thread lock to each bolt, making sure that the bolt is cleaned of the old thread lock material. This ensures that the bolts will not come undone easily. Place the bolts into the holes and tighten opposing bolts as we have demonstrated here. Do not tighten them in a circle. Make sure you tighten as the sequence shows. Use a torque wrench to tighten the bolts to 12 newton meters. Again, making sure that you do so opposingly and not in a circle. 
Now we need to fit the intermediate shaft back into the rear swing arm and then fit the swing arm back into the bike. We have made a custom tool here to make this job easier. It is a metal rod, the same thickness as the bolt that was removed earlier, that is just long enough to be flush with the swing arm bearings. This allows the swing arm and shaft to be fitted back into the bike in one piece, as doing it separately, while possible, is frustrating. Offer the swing arm up to the bike and line up the metal rod with the holes in the chassis. Be careful not to dislodge the metal washer spacers that are on the inside of the chassis. Some bikes are an easy fit, but some may require greater effort to get the arm into place. A rubber mallet can be used to knock the arm carefully into position. Grease the original swing arm bolt and then, once the rod is in line with the holes, push the bolt through. You may need to tap it through with a hammer but make sure that it is all in line before doing that. Replace the washers and castle nut onto the bolt and tighten. Now align the rear suspension pivot arm with the rear swing arm by lowering the bike or lifting the arm to allow you to push the bolt through. Tighten the rear swing arm bolt to 35 newton meters and the pivot arm bolt to 20 to 25 newton meters. Replace the rear brake caliper. Tighten the bolts but squeeze the brakes before tightening them completely. This ensures that the caliper is aligned correctly. Torque these up to 12 newton meters. Replace the brake pipe clip and screw in gently so as not to twist the clip. To fit the new chain drive, we need to split the chain by removing the clip as we did on the main chain earlier. Feed the chain around the large sprocket. Fit the new drive sprocket to the motor spindle, ensuring that the numbers on the sprocket face out. Feed the chain around and position so that you can reconnect. Line up the keyway and push in the woodruff key with the rounded edge towards the motor. Use a punch tool and a hammer to do this. Remember that concave washer from earlier? Fit it back onto the motor spindle with the nut. Now we need to adjust the tension of the chain. Use a pry bar to gently push the motor down and then flip up the motor tension arm. You can see here where we position the pry bar. Tighten the four motor bolts, two on each side. Torque these up to 25 newton meters. Feed the main chain through the swing arm and over the front sprocket. Put 
Pull through gently and line up the chain on the rear sprocket so that you can fit the connecting link back in place. Replace the O-ring and squeeze the links together as you snap the clip back on. Adjust the chain tension bolts, ensuring that the axle spacers are aligned with the same number of notches on both sides. This ensures that the wheel is square to the frame. Tighten the lock nuts on the tensioning bolts to ensure they do not move. To torque up the rear axle, use a hex drive or allen key on the caliper side and the torque wrench on the chain side to torque up to 50 to 55 newton meters. Torque the motor nut up to 50 newton meters. Note that you may need someone to sit on the bike as you do this because the leverage will turn the motor and the rear wheel. Fit the pulley cover back to the bike. You may need to use an allen key to get access to the bolt behind the motor tension arm. Bear in mind that the chain is going to be noisier than the belt and you should regularly check the chain's tension and ensure that no dirt collects inside the motor pulley cover. Congratulations! You have successfully fitted a chain conversion kit to your Sauron Light B.